on, on silent mode. I don't have a good temper, you know. I might go to the mic if I hear somebody is <laughs> Go and stand in the corner. <laughs> So, here we are, man. All your lovely bachas. Please bless us. So, I am that pain you will have to endure from beginning to end. So, just get yourself 45. How do I start the introduction? Mr. Yaskan Babi needs no introduction. Who will do the introducing once I finish introducing the other panelists? Does that sound like Nityanand? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not talking about Mr. Yaskan at all. I don't like him. I love I love him. <laughs> Our keynote speaker is Mr. Imanshu Jani who is an international executive coach and a leadership development consultant. One more, who I would like to call Bhatkelo Atma. Yaki Dunya Maragraj Karaj. Bharat Avlani, we know that. He just doesn't stay put anywhere. He's a storyteller and a memory collector. I have sleep with me. The gentleman here is our very old Bora president. Very enthusiastic. And I'll take a couple of minutes to introduce the new kid on the block. Our new principal, Mr. Yes Sachena, and he is a very accomplished, very proud president of the RKC. He has come down to RKC. Mr. Yes Sachena, who is an alumnus of various government schools, having done his masters from the government college Ajmer, he joined Mayor College as master of geography. And later became the coordinator of the geography department, is also the house master of the Oman house, which is the biggest house there. Besides being staff secretary, but most of all, Ram Square representative of the school. Sir, I am also a geography gold medal winner in RKC. <laughs> Don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> Standards, he has received two personal commendation letters from none other than Mrs. Smriti Irani, the charming minister of HRD. <laughs> <laughs> charming? <laughs> she is charming. I find her charming. <laughs> <laughs> After taking over his RS rep, he since attended nine international conferences. Another great initiative has been to amass 17,000 men hours of community service for three consecutive years. <laughs> and being awarded a gold medal for the same. Right. He was deputy housemaster of Lawrence School, Samawar, and also the officiating bus bursar for a while. A keen sports and adventure buff. Besides cricket and swimming, he has a strong affinity for high altitude trekking as also for scuba diving. <laughs> high altitude trekking and scuba diving. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Saxena brings versatility from his enriched experience, having traveled to more than 30 countries. May Rao request Mr. Yaskan. <laughs> 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 so, 
inched from Bombay and so many and all of you. Wonderful to have you here. Miss Cooper, of course, is a magnet for us. And thank you, everybody who is here. And now to do the deed that Yogesh has asked me to do. केवीती एक बात ने अवसर मणि गयो केवीती एक बात ने अवसर मणि गयो प्यासी नदी ने घुघव तो सागर मणि गयो केवीती एक बात ने अवसर मणि गयो प्यासी नदी ने घुघव तो सागर मणि गयो पामियो छे पामियो छे पुण्य श्लोके because Miss Cooper lived by that philosophy. Human beings, boundless love, boundless, boundaryless love for human beings per se, not for all creatures, for all creatures. So idea is to perpetuate her memory over the years for infinite times, I believe. So that the light, the lamp that she lighted in us of human humanity and human values remains ignited all the time. It just doesn't go get rid of. My father's share, I remember, is is basme dahar mein mu iman ka chera. There is world. In this world, I am that. Light of faith, Hargis Baja Sakina Mukhalif Hava Mujay. Ill wind could not, cannot blow away my chira, my damp light. The idea is to keep on talking about Miss Cooper and the value she stood for so that light that she has left within us remains, cannot be blown off. This is the basic idea. I think, today my life. And then, the point is that uh, every year, I believe, I'm not so sure, usually memorial lectures are held once a year, uh, they find eminent personalities to speak about. Not necessarily Arcasians, the best persons available who live by this principle of love for humanity. That they come and they speak to us about their life and what they believe and we may receive some good wisdom from them and accept it, as it were. It's not an easy job to find the right person. It must be not those who speak about it. It must be those who live what they speak about. If you don't mind, I'll speak one more share. <laughs> खुदा का घर बनाना है, खुदा का घर बनाना है तो दिल का नक्शा है, खुदा का घर बनाना है तो दिल का नक्शा है। The word Zahid means those people who claim to speak on behalf of God. Please remember, खुदा का घर बनाना है तो दिल का नक्शा ले। ये दीवारों की तजवीज कैसी Zahid? Why build walls if you want to build a house of God? Break the map. So this is the idea. The third idea, of course, is that we gather together. All of us, as often as possible. Madam's name is magnetic enough. And if there are really extraordinary human beings, we would love to get together. And when schoolboys get together, our patients get together, 
Of course, there'll be a lot of leg pulling, a lot of teasing, a lot of bending down and making my back crack up, as it were. And, but, I hope that along with that, we'll remember the atmosphere that prevailed in our PC all these years of camaraderie, of brotherhood, all those extraordinary value when we competed, we had rivals, but we remained one solid RPC family. It's very interesting that Yogi was telling me just yesterday that, uh, sir, we didn't know who was, what community or caste my dormitory we belonged to. I remember uh, the leading Agha Khani Khoja team came to Rajma College asking, me whether they could use the hall because other man was coming. And when they were going back, the leader said, Aapka naam Ayaz Khan hai? I said, yes. His next question, Muslimar kitne hai aapki school mein? I couldn't understand the question at all. I said, I have no idea whatsoever. Why should I know how many Muslims are in my This is not done in RPC. The other day, in Hiteshi's breakfast meat. <laughs> is Ajit Nasrani here? No, no. He answered me. He said, Really, sir? I didn't know Mr. Gopalani was a Muslim. We didn't no. never bother him. Who was who? Didn't matter at all. We were just lovely people who lived together, studied together, fought together, competed together. But we were RPCs. And that particularly idea of belonging together must be perpetuated every day. And it's wonderful to see all kinds of people. <laughs> this is to be followed by Mrs. Perry Nipoka's video clip. Perry is much younger than me, but I wouldn't know her age because I tried to forget my own. <laughs> <laughs> we call her parent with affection and with respect because she is a perfect representative of what Miss Cooper was when she lived. And she is as brilliant a teacher as Madam was. She is ex as, uh, what should I say, forgiving of my faults at least, and she represents all those qualities in a human being which are the best. So, then.
for this opportunity to speak at the memorial lecture dedicated to my sister Ratif Ramros Cooper. I have a prophetic poem written by a fairly unknown poet, Kenneth W. Andrews. Uh, copied in my sister's hand, many of you will recognize her distinctive handwriting. I quote last few lines. I am the swift upflinging of quiet birds in circling flight. I am the soft star that shines at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. I am not there. I did not die. It was almost an accident or perhaps it was fate which brought my sister to the college. She had approached the British Council in Bombay, now Mumbai, for a job. They had none to offer her but suggested to her and in fact arranged for her to visit the Rajkumar College, Rajkot. My sister went reluctantly, very reluctantly. She had never heard of Rajkot. However, the principal of the time, once she was there, persuaded her to stay until she found a job in Bombay. The rest, as we know, is history. College of Music, London, beloved daughter of Manik Bay and Faram Rose, Adesha Cooper, beloved sister of Perry Boga, born January 6, 1930, Bombay, passed away peacefully. March 2019 in Noho. She lives on through the lives and memories of a host of loving Artesians, relatives and friends. I think it is the last line which is the most important. She lives on through the lives and memories 
of a host of loving Arcasians, relatives and friends. That is a legacy. She lives on through the lives of a host of Arcasians. are placed in loving memory of the alumni of the Rajkumar College. Yeah. <laughs> 
मैं कैसे बताऊं कि चाहता हूं कि इसलिए उनको बस इतना जान लो कि इंसान हूं और मजबूर हूं But aura precision is steady. This is not the kind of introduction he wants. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, all of you, look at him. Just look at him. And if you have the faculty to look beyond, look at him. What he is inside, and his lavender. He is all that Miss Cooper would want. in her former students not accepted or right, then i do the ordinary things <laughs> <laughs> the conventional things which i don't in actually enjoy right? <clears throat> he was in rkc from 1958 to 67 In school, the various prizes he was awarded included the best all-round trophy, the best basketball colors, the basketball colors, and English and Hindi recitation medals, gold medals, mind you. I came across only yesterday a picture of Himanshu in the endeavor, throwing the shot. Beautiful. I almost brought there. Then I thought it might take him out too long. Himanshu has an MBA from the International Management Institution in Delhi. Institute in Delhi. A postgraduate graduate diploma in personal management. An IR from Faculty of Management Studies, Delhi University. And an MA MBA honors from Saint Stephen's College, Delhi. He also has an advanced diploma in French from Delhi University. In college, he was very active in the dramatic area and acted in several productions, one of which won several inter-college and national prizes, competition prizes. Himanshu has been a human resource leader for over forty-five years, holding. various leadership positions in india and abroad his last two assignments were vice president and director of human resources and leadership development agile technologies asia pacific vice president human resources and corporate communications communications by right? ulet peka india operations In these roles, he was recognized for leading the organization's program for human resources leadership development. Most admired employer at business excellence across several countries, including Australia, China, Japan, Malaysia, Singapore, Korea, Thailand, and Taiwan. <laughs> After his retirement, which he didn't really retire, did he, ma'am? After his retirement, he has been working as CEO, coach, and assessor, and a human resource consultant with four international organizations: Corn Ferry International, Bath Consulting. I hope I'm spelling or pronouncing right. Peak Insight and Insight Learning. International executive coach and leadership development consultant. With his wife Jayantika, he has been exploring history, culture, and cuisines of different regions of India and the world. They have their homes in Gurugram, Gurugram, Haryana, and Dugni district in Nainita. Lives in the hills. He was one of the founders of the Drupad Society Delhi, founders of the Drupad Society Delhi, and the reputed theatre action group in whose productions he acted. Himanshu continues to be immersed in his lifelong passions: films, music, cricket, tennis, theatre, 
and most of all travel. In other words, he is all that that I wish I could have been. <laughs> and instead of being jealous and envious of him, I have decided to love him. It's not over yet. <laughs> um, all of us who study in schools talk of the golden period of our school. And most of us, if you have enjoyed our schooling, consider that period when we were there as the golden period. But I claim the right to be a perfect judge of this because I was there for centuries as it were. <laughs> And you me, the golden period of RKC, don't kill me, or, I, or the most glittering golden period of RKC was 1958 to 67. It is in 1958 that the young, brilliant lady at the age of 25, 26 arrived, Miss Rati from Rose. Cooper. And she was overflowing with the teacherly feelings to pass it on. She was already very experienced, believe me. And that time, there were some lovely students, four of whom I especially would like to name Shahid Shizeki, Vijay Yaki. Vijay Ram and Himan Shujai. What was so beautiful of that period was here was a teacher ready to give and there was a group of boys who were ready to receive and blossom and receive and blossom and you know, there was giving and receiving and giving and receiving all the time and it was not one reaction. As they received and blossomed so did the teacher. You see her faculty as teacher group more and more and more and they so this was a beautiful period and all of you have benefited from that period as to what Miss Cooper continuously became better and better and better and more and more enthused to giving because in the initial period there was this this group. That is what I believe. Alright? Madam, as you said often, absolutely loved human beings. And of course she loved those students who were outstanding. When Shahid Siddiqui felt critically ill in 2008, she went all the way to Bangalore and sat by his bedside to be pastoring for days and days and days. But it was not that she only gave herself so much of herself to good students. Some of you remember there was, sorry to name is a late, one of the most difficult students in Rajma College at one particular time was Indu Rana. <coughs> Every single lot of laughter. Everybody had watched all the days of him and all that. Miss Cooper tried to work her magic. She had this dear living in her quarters. And she named him Indu. <laughs> Most subtle manner of influencing a difficult child. And this Indu <coughs> loved to chew up Miss Cooper's eyes, <laughs> and she didn't mind at all. So there was this this attempt all the time, all the time, never to neglect a boy. I love garden or I worship garden and I don't only like flowers. But it's not a correct statement for Miss Cooper. We ordinary teachers saw a lot of thorns, a lot of people whom we thought beyond repair gave up, washed our hands off. She saw a special bud <coughs> which needed more watering, brighter light, better fertilizers, and tender care. 
and she made them grow beyond their own beliefs as to how good they were. So that was another extraordinary aspect of Ms. Cooper. Never saw any thorns, only a challenge to help them. And if we could somehow find or make a kind of list of those, it will be mind-boggling, absolutely mind-boggling. Boys have given themselves up, the parents have given them up, and they are now doing extremely well. <coughs> Last, if you don't mind, your gift. She never had a harsh word for anybody. Miss Cooper could never speak in anger or say anything unbecoming of a principle of Rajma College. She lived the philosophy that Emerson spoke about in four short lines. Life is too short to waste in, in critic peep or cynic bark. Life is too short to waste in critic peep or cynic bark, quarrel or reprimand. It will soon be dark. Never reprimand, never critic path, never peeping into somebody's life, never being judgmental. That was what Miss Cooper is all about. Look at all of us and think, all of us who were in our case in those period, I dare say maybe some exceptions, have learned from her, have that spark of humanity the chirag in our body, in our mind and hearts. But it surprises me that when we look for an institution for our children or for our friends, we don't look for Cooperism. We don't think about the soul of the school. <coughs> what we think about is Qualification of the staff. Madam was most qualified principal of all the 15 principals we had. And Dr. Marwa, who was given the CBC bill, I'm not talking about that. But to believe that the one who has a whole line of qualification and other who hasn't is necessarily this one is poor and that one isn't. At one time, I gave a list of three members of this side and I didn't have to say more. Teacher is more than what he has learned. It is his heart and mind which makes it. So it's not the best measure to choose a good institution. Second thing we look for is 90%. How many students every year get 90%? Very good, full marks. But again, that doesn't necessarily make a more successful human being or a good human being. Many are, many aren't. And there's a proof, believe it or not. None of the sick people sitting here, including me, got 90%. Are we very bad? <laughs> Comparatively. We can be something without having received. 90%. I remember I got so worked up one time that I sent a list to all boys of 50 great Indians, beginning from the president to chief justice to chief of the army staff and businessmen, Dhirubhai and so and so and so and so, 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 right up to M.F. Hussain, right on the <laughs> Ali Akbar Khan, 50, two per category. And say, I dare you to find out anyone in there who would like to <coughs> And none of you got to remember that. <laughs> and the third is fees. The school which has the most fees is the best school. Ridiculous. 
absolutely ridiculous rkc consciously kept the fees much lower than most public schools i went to i don't know the name public school at school in pune with my grand doctor sir was studying there six times higher fees than rkc at that time and i saw the indiscipline i saw the discourse and i saw corruption and i told chote my niece is go utha lo you can't have this your son in this school this is what it is and again remember you all studied in the school which had least fees of all the public schools or non public schools in india that's not the right idea that's not the right idea finally one gentleman came to meet my father years back i was sitting next my father said had to introduce me my son so he said sahab jaate karte kya hai so i said i am a teacher my father was very upset the was a father son a teacher so he had to say no 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 he is house master rajma college prince school this that 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 if i was not interested in all this nonsense right him so he turned down to be in this aapki school mein every year how many pass students become doctors he had his own measure i said i have no idea he was shocked <coughs> School was not worth even looking at if they didn't know how many doctors it produced every year. I don't agree with that criteria. I'll give you a perfect criteria to judge a school. Perfect. Can't go wrong. Find out every year who's how many students pass away, pass not pass away, sorry, pass out. Are he man shoes? Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the honor. Good day, everybody. Council, Principal Mr. Yash Saxena, or a President Yoga Shobhana, may go and sit there. I feel better. Fellow Arcasians, may I, ma'am? Yes, of course. Fellow Arcasians and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Thank you very much, Ayer sir, for the very generous and embarrassing and unconventional introduction. You know, sometimes I feel the universe bestows unexpected honors. My dearest friend, Shahid Siddiqui, was undoubtedly Madam's all-time favorite student. and he was like a godson to her sid was an engaging speaker and a versatile actor <coughs> and if he were here today he would have been today's ideal unanimous choice for the first memorial lecture another great choice i think would have been bharat tomar you know our global old arcasians roving ambassador <laughs> who stayed in closest touch with madam through the years but he decided that he wanted to break the house down in the curtain call and then yogesh and kiran and my ncr who are a friends decided in my absence that i should be the designated speaker for this inaugural event so pretty much by chance and circumstance the universe conspired and here we are <laughs> so, 
So it is actually an absolute honor bestowed on me to deliver the inaugural keynote Raki Cooper Memorial Lecture on teachers as role models and attributes of the great ones. Uh, so how do I start to talk about the larger than life persona of Madam Rati Cooper, whose physical reality was this gentle, diminutive, charismatic being who loved wearing black saris with pastry pattern, who would coax the most incredible symphonies from her piano, who had studied music in London and USA, and yet loved her life in Lahore, Bombay, and Rajkot, who enjoyed wearing different fragrances, enjoyed hot rust chowder, Parsi cuisine, eaten with genteel flair, using a fork and knife always, that had never used her hands. And yet someone who left an indelible impression on our lives, how did she do this? It set me thinking about what were the attributes of a great teacher? What does one role model in that context? I came across a small video recently which I'd like to share. Uh, can we have the video, please? Some of you might have seen it, but it was really special for me. And I wanted to share that. It takes a few minutes. You know, second desk of Blue Jacket. What is your name? My name is Alexis. Alexis, please leave my lecture room. I don't want to see you at one of my lectures ever again. I don't understand. I am not going to ask a second time. Uh, thank you. classmate just now? Indeed I was. So, why didn't any of you protest? Why didn't any of you try and stop me? Why didn't you want to prevent this injustice? You see, what you have just learned you wouldn't have understood in a thousand hours of lectures unless you lived it. You didn't say anything because you weren't affected yourself. And this attitude speaks against you and against life. <laughs> you think it doesn't concern you, so it's none of your business. Well, I'm here to say, if you don't help bring about justice, then one day you too may experience injustice and there will be nobody there to stand before you. Truth and justice lives through us all and, and, and we must fight for it. Because in life and work, I mean, we often live next to each other, but not with each other. We console ourselves that the problems of others are nothing to do with us, none of our business. And we go home glad at night that we're spared, but 
It's about standing up for each other. Every day an injustice happens in business, sport, or on the tram. Relying on someone else to take care of it is not good enough. It is our duty to be there for others, to speak up for others when they cannot. I am here to teach you the power of your voice. I want you to learn critical thinking to empower you to stand up for what is right, even if it means going against what everyone else is doing. Let's begin. impacts students and inculcates values that students live by and never forget. Madam was one of those, right? Who lived by her values. I reflected dug into my memories and also asked Perrin about Madam's top five values. I mean, I have already spoken quite a few of them, but this is what she lived by and demonstrated in simple behaviors. These were honesty, truth, humility, generosity, and respect and caring for interpersonal relationship. For example, she would always insist on paying for her mother's and parents' stay at the college whenever they visited Rajkot. She always articulated what was in her mind and expected truth from others. Her humility and honesty, there was nothing over the top in her dress pattern, her jewelry, her demeanor, none of the I am the principal sort of standoffishness. She would laugh and joke with her staff at the college as if they were part of a fa family and she never talked down to anyone. Generosity and compassion, I just talked about it. She would give her last penny and was often broke herself to anyone in a hard luck situation and give her a fan or cooler to comfort someone else's mother. Move heaven and earth to get a deserving person admission into a good institution or persuade powerful people to give to the needy. Always looking to bring out the best in her students, Madam would give of herself generously and her, and her time. I remember her, I sort of mentioned that it was our good fortune. She joined in 58 just when I joined in 58, actually the same month. And when she used to prepare us for the English recitation for the annual prize day, I mean, she would work with us tirelessly. Rest periods, lunch breaks, late evenings, after dinner, and also share her fish and tartar sauce for us hungry stomachs as it were. She named the school magazine Endeavor to embody quite rightly what she expected from each one of us. Madam would do a host of little things which would show that you matter as a person. She had an amazing memory and would recall details about her students from decades ago. At one lunch, we, the NCR, old Arcasians had hosted for her in Delhi. It was absolutely mind boggling to see how she remembered each person's name, even though she was meeting them after decades. And I'm sure many of us had experiences of that. When we were building our home in the hills, she thoughtfully sent us all the way from Lahore an elegantly engraved nameplate of our home, seats of our, for our garden from Lahore, and a beautifully embroidered welcome sign. Her, a 
ability to establish trusting relationships was remarkable. I mean, due to her very caring nature and genuine interest in people, who, which she demonstrated by being there in many different ways. You know, I as mentioned, I mean, when my dearest friend, Shahid Siddiqui, was discovered with terminal cancer, she repeatedly visited Bangalore and was there for him and his family right till the end. Besides these values, I mean, her love for the English language was passionate and infectious. She made sure our pronunciation was perfect and that we continually learned new words. I mean, simple methods. She gave us a small pocket notebook, which we keep in our pocket. And our weekly challenge was to learn three new words and use them in sentences and share them in class. Madam's creativity is legendary. She made magic with plays like Higher Water and Dick Turpin, having limited resources, yet using her creativity to use the various backdrops of the school. The big people tree, or creating a small stream from the old well opposite the gymnasium, or using the steps and arches of the ferry court to really bring stories to life. Years later, when we founded Theatre Action Group in Delhi, TAG, and I had to make three corporate films for Hewlett Packard with limited budgets. I always got inspiration from thinking about how Madam would have handled those creative challenges. I believe that the Rati Cooper bust at the front of the Kalabhur named after her is a befitting tribute to the special qualities she enshrined. So besides Madam, allow me to share about the attributes of two other role models from school, who I'm sure have had a significant impact on many of us here in terms of what we grew up to be and achieve. Mr. Peter Rodson, our late principal from 63 to 91, Roggy, as we affectionately called him, was really every student's idol, right? And by on TV, an ex-army captain, handsome, strong, fit, who could beat any of us at any game, whether it was cricket, hockey, or football. And Efficiano of Western classical music, and the creator of the famous torchlight tattoo, I mean, which transported us to another realm. A versatile pianist who could play any tune after hearing it just once. And what a lovely, wry sense of humor. I remember that once uh, I yawned in his English class, uh, he threw a small piece of chalk at me and remarked with a smile, Well done, Hemancho. Only half a tonsil was visible. <laughs> Another time when Anil Patel and I had raided his larder and messily used his marmite paste. He called us out the next morning, taught us how to eat marmite, how it should be spread on thinly on the toast, and also, of course, uh, punished us with uh, fatigue parade after lights out. <laughs> and then you know, there was case Lokumar of Chasta, as he was, Laupa, as he was affectionately called by many of us. Uh, besides being later recognized as one of India's leading ornithologists, Laupa, I think, was one of the most maverick and unorthodox housemasters in the history of our school. <clears throat> Who else would think of taking a bunch of boys up to the roof at 1 a.m. in the night and then explain to us about the stars in the Milky Way. Who else would think of removing the fear of the dark 
from young minds by waking us up at midnight and challenging us to run one at a time to the darkest corner of the grounds and get back up, people leave. I mean, this dealing with fear, the unknown, and mustering the courage to face, you know, all sorts of situations was a really a hidden boon for me as a human resource manager when I had to manage violent trade unions and <coughs> situations, sit in strikes and things like that. Friends, how fortunate were we to have had teachers who are influential role models, madam with all the incredible values and attributes I've described earlier. Rogerson, sir, a visionary and an inspiration to develop multiple facets of our personality. Lokumar Sahib and his knowledge of the environment, our culture, heritage, and encouraging us to stand up to make a difference. There were many other teachers too, who a number of us have written about in our alumni exchange, email exchanges. Most recently, Tejas Vakil wrote about Ms. Badekha and the value of DEA. Uh, not to forget, we have a live uh, model amongst us today, Ayasar, I mean, who's an Arcasian and an outstanding teacher. <laughs> what is common about all of them? is that they possess the unique ability to shape our minds, inculcate qualities that we would grow up introjecting in our behaviors, qualities we emulate consciously or which have become second nature, which affected us in a way that made us want to be and continue to aspire to be better people. I believe these role models exemplified dedication and passion, fostered positive attitudes, respect and values, which showed us how to live with integrity, hope, determination, empathy, and compassion. Thank you, sir. They encouraged us to explore our arts, our interests, our discourse, discover our strengths, pursue long, lifelong learning, modeling a growth mindset, and imparted life skills such as effective communication, teamwork, how to navigate challenges and make a positive contribution to society. But as we recognize and appreciate the significant impact our teachers had on us, let us dwell on this for a few minutes and look at whether the vital core support exists in our next generation. Three of the most striking challenges impacting the current education scenario, the educator teachers in our country, are one, the prolific widespread use of mobile internet services. Two, the commoditization of education. And three, the evolution and accessibility of artificial intelligence applications, such as chat GPT. One, the widespread availability and use of the internet, while having its blessings, of course, of immediate access to data, connectivity, and communication with people, also has its disadvantages of information overload, misinformation, privacy risks, addiction, social isolation, and negative health impacts, to name just a few. Also, sites like Wikipedia, Google, tools like Siri and Alexa raise the challenge for teachers to establish their knowledge credibility and hold the attention of their students. Not just teachers, but also, I think we as parents need to role model usage of the internet responsibly, fact check, and not be conveniently dependent. Two, 
the commoditization of education has both constructive as well as depressing impacts on the education and the educator features. 70% of India's population is under 25 years old. It is obvious that ensuring good education can ensure a fruitful workforce leading to a prosperous economy. And there being a huge gap between supply and demand for education, the commoditization of education was a natural outcome. However, this commoditization has lessened the of education, weakened the student-teacher relationship, and weakened the rationale for education, and provided shortcuts of capsule learning as opposed to the curiosity of being. There appears to be three significant problems with commoditization of education, and I'll just touch upon these very quickly. The first and foremost one is the most obvious one, that an education leading to the grandeur of ideas is replaced by education as a means of money making, and thereby leading to small mindscapes. Secondly, a commodity by its very nature is finished packaged. Commoditized education therefore entails handing over packaged things called learning to the students, which necessarily precludes their asking any questions, being critical, or engaging with the received ideas, or being creative and original. I think the key essence of education is that. And the third obvious problem with commoditized education is that it ignores the role of education in inculcating the values underlying the essence of our nation. Democracy, secularism, social and economic equality, gender equality. The third challenge for today's teacher is the evolution and accessibility of artificial applic intelligence applications. Chat GPT. While artificial intelligence has multiple advantages yet to be discovered, as in the breakthrough in the field of medicine and health diagnosis and cures, apps such as Chat GPT used in the field of education have opened new possibilities and offer advantages, of course, in terms of conversational assistance, language comprehension, and learning facilitation. One click and the class lesson is prepared. One click and a supposed learned thesis is created. One click and a piece of verse is created. Here's what was generated in seconds when I entered the verse on teachers as role models. And let me quote from Chad Gimundi. In the realm of knowledge they stand, they stand tall, guiding us through life's winding hall. Teachers, role models with hearts so kind, their wisdom and compassion intertwine. In classrooms where greatness takes flight, these their twelve teachers shining bright with passion they impart. Knowledge straight from the heart, great teachers, beacons of light. Quite brilliant, huh? <laughs> One click, and I become a creative poet. One click, and the homework is done. I mean, it just shows that. AI apps such as Chat GPT also present barriers. I mean, care has to be exercised to mitigate risks associated with misinformation, bias, lack of human interaction, critical evaluation, and challenges responsible usage. It undermines the educator's autonomy and professionalism. And it could lead to easy, superficial learning, scanning studies, laziness, 
and the false pretense of intellectual development. As those two verses fortunately could make me out to be a great poet. <laughs> yeah. So my friends, as we navigate the complexities of an ever-changing world, it's imperative to safeguard the true essence of education from the perils of the internet, commoditization, and irresponsible usage of AI, while <coughs> being enlightened enough to use them for the true advantages that they can offer. This entails new learning and a new mindset for teachers too, the need to understand the new tools available, their advantages and their shortcomings, and the discernment to know when they can be actually beneficial, beneficial for the learner and when a more human interaction is needed. By valuing holistic development of our next generation, promoting inclusivity, nurturing intellectual curiosity and respecting the contribution and autonomy of educator teachers, we can reclaim their transformative power and ensure that our teachers remain beacons of enlightenment and empowerment for generations to come. Just as Madam Ratikupa was for us a superlative role model. As I thought of these great beacons of light, I was reminded of the last verse of one of my favorite poems, Henry Newbold's Vijay Lampada, The Torch of Life. This is the word that year by year, while in her place the school is set, every one of her sons must hear and none that hears it dare forget. This they all with a joyful mind bear through the life like a torch in flame and falling fling to the host behind, play up, play up and play the game. <coughs> and so I do hope that each one of us here, in whichever way we can, will continue to play up, play up and play the game and uphold our school motto. May I request Bharat Amlani, whichever country you are in, please play down. <laughs> Yes, sir. Sir was talking about 90%, 80%. And I have repeatedly told this word in a lot of RKC meetings. So what, is, what was RKC about and what is RKC about? It was, someone asked our late principal, Mr. Rogerson, that why should I put my child in RKC? So sir replied, I don't promise to make him a doctor or engineer, but I'll make him a man. That is who I'll say. Bus? Thank you, Don. <laughs> and I'd like to remind you all that we are all work in progress. <laughs> Kiran sent me a beautiful quote, which I thought is very apt for me to mention. Gurus, by gurus I mean teachers and elders, are to be praised in their presence. <laughs> Friends and relatives at their back. Uh, no, what I mean, friends, relatives at their back, servants and dependents of the completion of their task. But one should never praise about 
one's own children and wives in front of others. And tomorrow is Guru Purnima. And I can't think of a more act than the shlok that Kiran Bhagwana shared with me. So it's an honor and a privilege to allow you to smell the flowers, sir, and to be scooped. Kunja uh, Papu, when introducing Mr. Ayas Khan, said that Mr. Ayas Khan makes no introduction. Uh, I remember an anecdote when uh, J.R.D. Tata was being introduced. And what the speaker meant to say was <coughs> that words are inadequate enough to introduce Mr. J.R.D. Tata. But the person in a state of nervousness and in haste said, Mr. Tata, the less said, the better. <laughs> and if Ms. Cooper were to hear me doing that four part, I would have been immediately put in detention. Right away. But you know what? She would have also given me a hot cup of hot chocolate. So even in punishing, she'll do it with utmost kindness and compassion. Most of you remember ma'am from your school days. I had the privilege of knowing her not only as a schoolboy but also as a working adult. Miss Cooper retired and returned to her home in Lahore in the year 2000. I had the great pleasure to visit her and her sister Perrin in Lahore so many times that I admit I lost town. I have a Malaysian passport and I have multiple visas to visit Pakistan. And you know, when you talk of India and Pakistan, the political divide gets wider and wider, but because of people like Ms. Cooper and Ms. Perrin, the people divide gets narrower and narrower. I dare say, to go up and visit Ms. Cooper and Perrin in their home in Lahore for the very first time. Sailesh Patel and Javed Patiawala visited them later too. Robert Fulham, uh, the author, once wrote that all I really need to know, I learned in kindergarten. I happily accredit and share with you that I learned the foundations of my management lessons from Ms. Cooper. Here are my five top Cooper management lessons, if I may say so, that helped me steer my career. Number one, always others before self. Always keep others before self. Most of you know that Ms. Cooper never accepted gifts from anyone. I think if you ever Try giving her something, she'll gladly give it back or take a small piece and pass it to somebody else. But whenever I visited Lahore, there would be a standing instructions that Bharat, carry as many jars of tiger palm as you possibly can and that means dozens. And this was given away to everybody who had some pain. And that's what she did to ease another's pain, not her pain. I once invited her for lunch at the Pearl Continental Hotel in Lahore where I normally stay. And I know Ms. Cooper has big respect for artists and things artistic. So because she was old, I chose a table near the entrance and the artists were performing in front. And I think Ms. Cooper was overjoyed. And she wanted to show her appreciation to the artist. So I sent a word to the artist. Okay. Madam, I you and Ms. Kuh was very upset. He said, we cannot invite artists to come to us, we have to go to them. She insisted the artist with, she walked all the way, and that's what she did. There are many such incidences when I speak about put others to self, others before self. Number two, 
was to always live with love and compassion. <laughs> and as Sir said, I don't ever remember her having any ill will towards anyone. And I have no idea how she shows she is upset. Because even that she didn't miss me. Her personal physician is Dr. Jimmy Jasawala, whom I'm very much in touch with. And I continue being in touch. He has a differently able daughter, uh, deaf and dumb. And you know how difficult it is to handle such children. Uh, they have a lot of tantrums. Miss Cooper was the only person who could come. So every time they could not control Sherry, they'll bring her to Miss Cooper and magic would happen. So when you live with compassion, you have no idea the kind of people you can touch. So that was the second thing I learned from her. I think with love in your heart and with kindness and compassion, you can even conquer not only difficult people, but you can win over your enemies. In remembering others, we are remembered. We remember Miss Cooper because she remembered us more than we remember her. Most of you would have been the beneficiary of greetings to her. Be it your mother's death anniversary, be it your father's birthday, be it your children's birthday. I think she never forget, forgot moments. I think Miss Cooper were to speak, she would say, I don't want to be remembered. I want to remember. Number four, that's very, very close to her heart. She used to always say that, that no success or achievement in material terms is worthwhile unless it serves the needs or interest of the country and its people. And it is achieved by fair and honest means. And every time I visit her, she'll ask me about the boys. And I don't ever remember asking her asking me how well they are doing in life materially. She would ask me what are they doing in their lives? What are they doing beyond the vocation that they've chosen? What she was interested in is how has the world benefited from their education? Because she believed that those of us who have this privilege of being educated, we have a much bigger responsibility and duty to impact the lives of other people. And when I was a student at Neswadia in Pune, I remember meeting a nun in Panjgani, I think she was teaching in St. Mary's or St. Kimmins, I can't remember which convent it was. But she told me something that had a very profound effect on me and she said, Bharat, when I leave this world, please don't put any wreaths or flowers on my grave because I want you to smile at me. But if you got any flowers to give, please give it to me now so that I could smile at you. And, I, and that thought lived with me for 20 years because I thought we have never done enough for Miss Cooper. And when I took an early retirement in the year 2015 from Unilever, the first project I did was I reached out to Arcasians all over the world by the hundreds. And I said, let's honor Miss Cooper. So I requested them all to send me a message and it had few criteria. Number one was, please share a photograph of you in school so that Miss Cooper will remember you as a schoolboy. And please send a photograph of your family so she'll get great joy into the man that you've become. Number two, tell her what you do outside work. What do you do for the community as a Rotarian, as a lion? or anything that you have done to give back to the community. And that was what she was really interested in. What are we giving back to the world from whom we have deserved more than what we rightfully deserve? I personally feel that I've got more than I deserve. And the third, to honor her, to honor the year of her life, to do an act 
of charity and that was to sponsor a child because that was close to her heart to plant a tree because nature was close to her heart or do something for somebody who was sick and old and I was delighted that I only wanted 88 stories I got more than 100 so we published a book and we presented to her on her birthday and a lot of Parkinson's wrote I didn't get a chance and we repeated it and we published another book and I think those two books sit in the living room in our home in Lahore and I remember someone telling me that those messages from you all added years to her life so I'm glad that we presented our flowers to her and she could smell it And the last lesson was to always strive for excellence. That one must never shortchange, however small, any task that's given to you, you should never be satisfied with the second best. And this brings me to a very emotional moment, and that was my last meeting with Ms. Cooper. It was a branch, again, we had at the Pearl Continental Hotel in Lahore. And I knew Miss Cooper was very fond of garden. You know, she would like to sit on a corridor where which had an endless vista of green and birds chirping. And so I chose the Nadia Cafe, a beautiful corner. There was an MF Hussein painting in the background, a beautiful garden. It was a sunny day. We had a lovely lunch. And while returning, she could hear a pianist performing in the lobby of the hotel. So Perrin and me were walking in front and Ms. Cooper was walking with a roller which Rahul Patel kindly provided. And then we noticed, we looked behind and we realized Ms. Cooper was missing. And then I said, Ms. Cooper actually changed her direction and she had actually walked up to the pianist. And for the first time I saw Ms. Cooper visibly upset. And I said, ma'am, what happened? He said, no, 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 Bharat, let's go. But I said, ma'am, you look upset. He said, no, 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 Bharat, let's go. Then I spoke to the pianist, kya hua? Okay, madam ko piano, piano bajana. Lekin humari policy hai ke hum guest ko piano nahi bajana ke hai. Then I asked, aapka manager ko na, to lati hai na ho humari PR manager hai. So I walked up to her and I said, we possibly have the best pianist in the country today. And if you don't allow her, it would be your loss. And a little bit of reluctance, she allowed man to play the piano, which I'm going to share with you shortly. But after the piano, Ms. Cooper walked up to the PR manager and he says, it's an insult to ask a pianist to operate on this piano because the piano is badly tuned. And the pianist says, Madam, my management ko bought time sector of a cartoon kare, like in summer time. <laughs> and she touched Madam, he touched Madam's head. You know what Madam did? He said, I'll send my pianist, her, 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 the person who tunes her piano, to the hotel the next day. And she got the piano tuned. Good move, Everything I said, she demonstrated in the way she treated the pianist. I think she continues to complete the education. Can we please uh, have that short video? Uh, before that, can we just switch off all the lights, please? Let the room be dark. It's okay. It's safe. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to test, just switch off all the lights. Jaldi, Jaldi, sir, let this be the. Ashok, you don't do it, you are dangerous. Wait, wait, there's something coming from behind, guys. Take a calculator risk. Why are you going to say, I get you like Pandora? Okay, okay, guys, just be virtually patient. It's just a question of a few seconds. Relax, chill. See, I get you. Okay, I'll show you what the instructions come from. Sit. Okay, bus ticket. Okay, okay, make it 
you know, inform you all that what we have done in the URA for the last year or so. Uh, last year in March, we had a get together at the palace in Rajkot, the largest ever URA gathering ever uh, of more than 400 of us who met courtesy Thakur Sai Rajput who hosted the event and since then we have actually been on a roll. Uh, we started our website in August last year rajput.com which is now gathering momentum. Uh, in August last year we also installed Miss Cooper's bus in the school where also we had a very large gathering. We had some of our trustees also who were present and uh, they graced the occasion. Then uh, in November last year we had uh, uh, a war tank arranged and donated through the efforts of Mr. Sujan Chinoy, another old boy of ours, and it was installed in, the, in our school. This is the T55 war tank. You know. And we, uh, so these are the events where the ORA has been involved. So I'll just say briefly, uh, we had the annual athlete athletic meets in January. We also had the ORA day in January where also we had an attendance of more than 450. This is also in Rajput and the school. Uh, we had uh, the <coughs> prize distribution ceremony uh, this year where also our uh, members were invited at the school. In uh, January, we launched the membership, digital membership card for all our members. Now, we have more than 8,000 members, but we have issued cards for 842 till this morning. So, I would request uh, some of you and your friends who are Acacians to apply for the membership card. It's a very simple form. It's available on our website if they can apply. So, you know, we want to get to know where all our members are. And this is the best way. And it's digital, so we don't need any physical contact in that respect, you know. Uh, all these 842, almost 100 of them are from overseas and about 50 of them are girls. So, we have a, a figure of the girls, even, I mean, I'm sure we can do better, but <laughs> hopefully you, you all will send out the message to our fellow Arcasians to do and uh, apply for that, uh, for the card. Our, uh, uh, Association has applied for an HEG certificate for income tax purposes to get donations. And we are also applied to be qualified under the CSR form so we can get donations uh, for that so that we can uh, further help other uh, needy people. Uh, some, something like on the lines of what Ms. Cooper tried to do. She gave all her salaries away sometimes to, to, to the needy, the less privileged. So, so we are kind of going towards that as well. Uh, recently, we also have a WhatsApp group for all our uh, members where we give out news about the ORA activities. We also give news about the school as well. And recently, we have had 
uh, OIA get togethers in Bombay and in Mumbai to present a, a new principal who joined the school uh, sometime in April. And we have uh, we have a good response for him from our members. I, I think uh, that kind of takes care of all the things which we have been trying to do. We are going to have uh, three permanent programs for the ORA in the school. That is the ORA day in January, then the prize distribution ceremony in April, and the tattoo in December. So I would sincerely request all of you to try and come to these programs as and when they are announced. And another permanent program which we are going to have, and it is going to be in Ahmedabad, is the Miss Cooper Memorial Lecture. We are going to have it on an annual basis every year in Ahmedabad. So, uh, you know, if you look at Miss Cooper's picture, and you look at her eyes, you see compassion and kindness. You know, and that's what we need to do. And she always believed that we should be better human beings. And on the tomorrow we have Guru Puna. And we are honoring our Guru in her today. So this is another occasion which we can Uh, also, I would like to mention all the people who made this function happen. When we decided on the memorial lecture, we decided that we spoke to the executive committee of the ORA and all were in favor of having this. Uh, so, but it was in Ahmedabad and we needed to have people locally from Ahmedabad, you know, otherwise it wasn't going to be possible if you are going to do it out of, uh, out of Rajkot or Bombay where I am or from Delhi. So what we did is we formed a steering committee for this, you know, and uh, one of the people who are, uh, I mean, I'll just name the people who are in there so that we have an idea who actually one of the people who did this, or who made this happen, you know. So I'd like to start with Amit, Amit Shukla, who is also a secretary of the ORA. A lot of things that you see here are his doing, he, including designing uh, of all our invites, of the backdrop, of the standee, of a lot of write-ups which he has done. Uh, a person very humble. He will not go about and tell people that I have done this. So uh, he's been one of the very foremost uh, uh, person who did this. And then, of course, we have uh, Dr. Kubawa who has been handling the press for us here. Can you stand up? Okay. Uh, and then I will, uh, it's, we have Ashok Ai Patel. And I, I'm, I'm mentioning uh, Yogendra Singh Chatterjan now, but he has not only been very helpful, encouraging, not only in his time, but also financially. Thank you, Yogendra. The others on the committee are uh, Pujjawala, managing our uh, program this evening. And uh, we have uh, uh, Subodh Nath, 
whose experience and guidance has made this program possible. And uh, the others on the committee are Anil Dalal, Joel, who has managed our communication, our uh, uh, review methods, uh, and, uh, and Radhi uh, C. Jepa. Unfortunately, he's not with us today because. Uh, something came up and we had to be there. So this is our uh, steering committee here in Ahmedabad and they have, in my opinion, done a very good job. I, I don't live here, so most of the work has been done by them. Then also we are going to have a very important announcement after my speech. And in that, My brother has been very contributing. His name is uh, Kiran, Kiran Mubana. May everyone have a brother like Kiran. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the person who always edges me on, urges me on to do things, is Vinesh Patel. Without him, none of this has been possible. Finally, the two people who made this thing, event happen, and when we thought that this is going to happen is, one is Harinder Singh Rathore. He is a very silent supporter, and we have, we have the pleasure of him being present today. Normally, he doesn't come to our questions, but he, he has supported us here in a very large manner, as well as in other programs in Bombay as well. So, thank you. And last but not the least, we have uh, Joe's John, who, who is the owner of this place. And he has been extremely helpful, very accommodating, and he has given a lot of support in arranging this venue for us. Thank you, Joe. I, I think uh, that says it all, uh, and I'm thankful to all of you to make it this afternoon to this function. Thank you. Uh, may I call upon the Secretary or uh, Amit Shukla to come in, give some wonderful news, something really out of the box. And one more thing. Uh, he mentioned all of us as being part of the steering committee. To be honest, there were just three guys who were working and slogging it out. That was Amit Shukla, Joel, and Kirin. Amit Buddha Chobana Gadi Achai. Honestly, it's good. You can't do that, Gadi has a chate in We were hoping to have more 
of our staff members present. Unfortunately, two of them could not. Uh, Dr. Marwa was, <coughs> there were four that were invited. Mr. Vitaria, Dr. Marwa, uh, Mrs. Farzana. Unfortunately, Mr. Vitaria could not make it to the health reasons. And Dr. Marwa was to be present. Unfortunately, he is missed. And obviously, Mr. Khansa himself. And we are fortunate to have him. Uh, to begin with, uh, I'd like to announce a, a small uh, token of our gratitude to Mrs. Farzana Mehta. for being one of the finest house mistresses of prep house. Your compassion knew no bounds in caring for everyone under your care Madam. Your passion for teaching ignited a love for learning and your personal interest in each one of us fueled our ambitions. We are forever grateful for your dedication and care. Today we express our heartfelt appreciation for the profound influence that you have had on all of us. Thank you for being our guiding light from the Old Arcasians Association. Please, sir. Look at here. centuries at RKC. That servers at RKC, excellence came to him naturally. From his beginnings as a bright-eyed schoolboy, he demonstrated exceptional promise and thirst for learning. He was made monitor after the first year he was at RKC. As a monitor, he inspired spears with steadfast dedication to discipline and leadership, rising through the ranks as a prefect and head prefect. He exemplified integrity, honesty, 
and a commitment to excellence in multiple facets of school life. Transitioning seamlessly from student to teacher at RKC, he ignited young minds with his passion for learning, performing arts, and sports. As a housemaster, his eyes lit up. A position that was closest to his heart, he nurtured a sense of belonging and teamwork, fostering an open environment where boys and girls matured into confident young men and women, <coughs> ultimately assuming the role of vice principal and finally the director. He steered RKC's course with visionary leadership, transforming the school into a beacon of all round educational brilliance. Reconstruction of the school post, Gujarat, post the Gujarat earthquake, establishing the Priya Lok, introducing the COVID model of education with Mr. Michael Singh, are just a few of the many significant initiatives that Sir envisioned and led from the front. Mr. Ayaskan's immeasurable contribution to the RKC community as a student, an educator, and administrator have left an endearing impression on all fortunate enough to engage with him. Through his tireless efforts and resolute belief in the transformational energy of academics, arts, and sports, he has shaped innumerable lives and created a lasting legacy of extraordinary distinction in lifetime achievement, an outstanding service to the Rajkumar College and its student body. I would like to repeat that. Through his tireless efforts and resolute belief in the transformational energy of academics, arts, and sports, he has shaped innumerable lives and created a lasting legacy of extraordinary distinction in lifetime achievement and outstanding service to the Rajkumar College and its student body. Sir, in recognition of your remarkable journey, spending a lifetime at the Rajkumar College, and the profound impact that you have had on generations of students. It is with utmost admiration, respect, and gratitude that we confer upon you the old Arcasian Association's Lifetime Achievement Award. Present a citation and a token of our Guru Dakshina, a check of rupees 10 lakhs to Mr. Ayaskar. Ladies, if possible, fostering cherished memories 
friendships. We plan to present to uh, the speakers and few of the people who have contributed. Please come forward. Thank you. Since graduate of manufacturing the momentum and sponsoring it at the first Mr. Cooper Memorial Lecture. Your support made for a unique gift that awardees will cherish for years to come. We are immensely grateful for your generosity. Thank you. Let's <laughs> please. Let's please look at here. <laughs> Distinguished old boys, spouses, ladies and gentlemen, I am indeed honored to be a part of your reunion and RKC chapters meeting here in Ahmedabad. Originally I was interested upon this painful duty to take you a little bit away from those fond memories of the past. Ms. Cooper and of course Mr. Vladi also, Mr. Japan, Mr. Khan and others. I'm to take you to the present but I'm sure uh, we are way past time and it is everybody is hearing for some nice sumptuous lunch. So I will just specify and sum up what I wanted to share with you. Uh, RKC is a legendary institution, all of us are sanguine of that. And I am indeed very honored to be a part of this family. As you all are aware, it's very difficult to wear into the shoes of legends like Ms. Cooper, Mr. Rajasan, Mr. Khan, and all other great principals. But I am very happy to state that uh, after a stringent gap of almost a year, I joined as a principal and within this four and a half months of my tenure at RKC. Uh, things are moving very, very quickly. We have identified our grey zones. We have consolidated on our strengths. And we have a certain mind map for the future. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all as good as our children. So it becomes our utmost priority and duty as educators to equip them to face the challenges of the modern world. And in order to equip them, we all need to unanimously work together to give them a certain platform where they face the rigors of a big life ahead after class 12th. And this can happen in a certain belief. I presented my vision to the board of trustees at the latest meeting on 19th May. And I'm very happy to state that all of them have unanimously approved my vision of one year. We are now working for a five-year vision and then eventually we will be working on a master plan to shape up the path for future. What would RKC look like 20 years or 25 years down the line? So uh, I'm very also I'm also very happy to share with you that the activities are on full swing. We have begun with our uh, second term on uh, 26th this month, students are back, our voters are back, our team voter module is catching a pace. Teachers are very happy, they are rejuvenated after a gap of two months almost. Although the Adam staff was working continuously, uh, preparing ourselves to receive the students back, and there are many, many good opportunities for our students to look forward for during this term. But what I would like to share in this community would be that I made certain promises on the micro level to the ORA president and to Vinesh Bhai and all others whom I have met in due course of time. So very soon all of you worldwide will be having a RKC digital newsletter and through that you, you will be in touch and at the same tangent that what is happening on campus recently the latest updates and we will obviously for the obvious reasons because of physical distance uh, we will be having it in a digital platform and i will be sharing the first edition sometimes towards the end of july and please do expect it monthly at the same time 
Uh, also to share that RPC media team which is being recently formed is doing very well. Just yesterday we, we uh, got a clip of the 1000 follower or of our social media handles. So RKC is now um, with a lot of action on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, of course the website and what am I forgetting? YouTube. 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 <laughs> Sorry. So I, I'm personally not on FB or Instagram but yes now I'm being driven by my own students because this is a completely student led team uh, which are driving these social media handles and we are regularly updating almost on the <laughs> We have revived certain exchanges, foreign exchanges. We have revived round square conferences, and I'm also very happy to announce that for the first time we will be having uh, a 10 student, two or teachers exchange starting from November this year. We will have the pilot group being received here. We have established the ex uh, exchange with Beth Naska, which is Maharaja Independent High School in Warsaw, Poland, and. As most of you would know, it is it was made up in the memory of the late uh, Jan Sahib of uh, Navanagar and uh, also called, known as the Good Maharaja because he did a lot of work in helping out and endowing education to the refugees of the World War. So there is also a square on his name in Warsaw, Poland. So we will be receiving the pilot group in November this year and our students will be going to Warsaw on an exchange next year in summer vacation. So that is another year. I have I had many many slides uh, prepared for you all, but uh, would you like to see? Yeah, 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 sure, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, yeah. Please, please, please. Okay, I know I can already see some smiles. You see, ladies and gentlemen, while you were at RKC, those were the times. But I'm sure it brings a lot of smile on your faces when you see and you relive your memories in those pictures. What is happening in RKC? As of now, so quickly, I'll just fall, fast forward it in no time. So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mehta, if you can help me out. It's not this one. Yeah, just put it on slideshow. Right. Yeah, go ahead, please. I call this presentation resurgence because. Uh, the school is full of action after a very very unfortunate gap post due to the pandemic and then obviously due to some uh, due to some governance issues for last one year but full of action now just please keep on going ahead as you all are aware uh, the war trophy tank unveiling ceremony happened in september last year in november sorry then the annual athletic meet in january The prize giving this year was overwhelming. We had almost 2200 as audience and uh, the Chief Minister of Gujarat was kind enough to praise the occasion as the Chief Guest. The prize giving of younger forms kept on happening. This is the Priya Lopilas, our pre-primary wing. They revived the cross country after a gap of four years. And uh, we had it at the Niari Dam early this morning on 9th of April. This is very interesting. We instituted an intra trophy in the school in memory of late Sri Vikram Singh Ji Jadija who was our biggest trophy. Believe me, it's an intra trophy on a model. Four houses, four teams Halar, Jalawad, uh, Sorat, and uh, Dwelwad. And four adult teams the academic staff, the Adam staff the 4th class employee staff and the sports staff and believe you me the academic staff was the semi finalists obviously we had to lose to the boys and Chalavad won the trophy this year okay. that's that's Priya is also a buzz of activities that is a pre primary wing all international festivals are being celebrated there this was the Earth Day when they planted uh, mango saplings. Regular activities at school, recitations are on. Go ahead, please. 
The culinary science club is doing very well. The girls are taking a lot of interest, and fortunately, we have boys also joining them. <laughs> to my amusement, uh, uh, we have several number of boys opting for home science, wow. which is very good. <laughs> NCC continues to be the USP of RKC. We are one of those very few schools in a country which, which have got four wings of our, uh, NCC: the Navy, Air. Army and an exclusively all girls wing. So this is the enrollment and the orientation. The MUNs are given a lot of opportunities. They have taken part in uh, uh, Mir College Girls School MUN and uh, um, MUN Heights MUN. And uh, very recently, we have sent a team to Wellens uh, and they will be going to Lawrence School Sanab later this month. And they are doing really well. Go ahead, please. Thank you. This was the exchange I was talking to you about. We already are in partnership with the French school, and now <coughs> our kids will be going to Poland and we will be receiving kids from Poland on an annual basis. Also, the Brown Square conferences a delegation of seven students and one teacher went to Lawrence School Sanar for an international conference uh, early this June. And of course, they will be going to Kenya, Brugos Group of Schools, in October this year. Continuous faculty development programs keep on happening. This is the NAP workshop for faculty. This was my general staff meeting when we began with the term this year. We conducted storytelling workshops for our teachers, how to uh, inculcate the ethos of storytelling to make your classes interesting. All across, from 1 to 12. Boxco workshops for teachers. We recently had orientation for our senior forms where a group of American companies they came and gave their orientation and uh, I am very happy also to share that on 7th of July we will be having uh, a career fair uh, participated by 21 foreign universities for our students exclusively. <laughs> the academic visits keep on happening. The Thomas students went to National Stock Exchange and BSE Mumbai. The political science students, they went to see the Gujarat Assembly in action in, uh, in Nadirina. The end of the term trips after five to give them a breather, Mount Abu, Utiko Masur, Sasangir. Two trips went to Manali. Very happy to share that our girls could achieve a height of 13 and a half thousand feet on their trip. Before, before I speak about community service, I am also very happy to share that as per my vision and as approved by the board, all trips at RKC now will have an element of challenge and adventure. There will be no more fun trips and pleasure trips where you live in hotels and you just eat good food and be in luxury. Very good. So this is a decision that we take. So community service continues, we have adopted a village called Khandana village. Our students are regularly making us proud with their achievements. For continuous years, we were unparalleled champions of the pipe and, bra, uh, pipe and brass band and this year also we won all India IPA. As sir rightly said, grooming global leaders with character, so no more percentages matter, our endeavor is to make good human beings and men and now women out of them. So, a cricket team is doing very well. They won, uh, they won the tournament in Karnataka and they were the runners up. Uh, at Sindhya School Fort Gwalior, being defeated in the final by the present day IPC champion, uh, Motila Nehru School of Sports, right, MSS, right. Recently, a team returned back from Villa Vidya Mandir Nenital, where our team was the second best standing, and our, our, our boys won two golds, two silvers, and three golds. Buzz on campus, some of the old staff members were bid farewell. This is also an endeavor which is revived after a very long time. Uh, quite a lot of you would remember Sri Ram Singh Thapa. 
a very senior cook in the mess. He is now aging. He is 78 already. He kept on super animating and he fed quite a lot of you without even you knowing it. Relentless services to RKC for 52 years as cook. So we honored him on his, on his retirement. And of course, the Towner module. This is the day boarder module where the students would come on campus at PD time in the morning and would leave only after the sports. These are the social media handles which I was talking to you about. Please check them out. Very briefly, very briefly, I'll just take you to something which you all deserve to know. Some of the immediate steps after I've taken over formation of editorial board, not only for Endeavor, for, but for uh, newsletters, formation of media team, recruitment of competent faculty, uh, redesigning the organogram of the school and very, very importantly, uh, ongoing review and corrective measures for framing SOPs. Ladies and gentlemen, I am of the core belief that the processes should be more important than persons. So the school should be run by well laid down procedures people come and go. So that is my endeavor. So I am regularly uh, doing these, uh, revising these SOPs and um, uh, uh, legis uh, legislatives to run the school. This is of course the RKC outreach program where like today I am meeting you all but that was a different occasion today. But I have already met uh, some of the distinguished old boys at Delhi and Mumbai. Ahmedabad happens to be the third. Further up, I will be going to Kenya in October and I will be meeting some of our community in Nairobi in October and of course other important cities of our country and abroad. We had a long deliberation with the board members this time. What do we need? So immediate infrastructural development and a long term one which comes to our mind are of course on your screen. Internet ready computers in lodges, that is my dream. Teachers resource center, we need to have a wonderful admissions and then a parents parlor. Horse riding is being revived, it is already approved. Once the rain set in, the stables will be made towards the end corner of the north block or north ground and we would begin hopefully with the horse riding sometime in September. We certainly need a CFPA, a big world class auditorium because as you all are aware, Hapsikji Hall is grand uh, with full of heritage but now uh, it does not uh, meet the demands of such a large population. And of course we do need a competitive level, uh, level swimming pool, Ranjit Singh Ji Bath will be there, will always be there, it's a swimming pool of a rich heritage. But unfortunately, it is only 19 meters and when it comes to interhouses, it has been blocked because there are stairs on the deeper end. So blocked with planks, so it reduces to 16 meters. So Ranjit Singh Ji Baths will be used only for kids to learn swimming. But for competitive practice, one day, one good day we will have a, either a 25 meter or a 50 meter pool. I would like to leave you all with a thought, small thought, I will be very quick on this. Ladies and gentlemen, it took me a lot of time to understand the recent history based on your experiences shared from the trustees, stakeholders, founding members. I have been mandated to at least pave the path to bring RKC back to its old glory, which all of you fondly remember. We have now, we all are a family here, so I have no hesitation in sharing with you all. We have deviated a little bit in between. The model of day scholars came in for best reasons. Girls are a boon, all thanks to Sir. We agree sports. on that, yeah. We agree on that. Girls' school <laughs> is a boon. <laughs> no, no, girls are doing really well. We, my RKC has my always, been, always been, always been an all boys boarding school. But ladies and gentlemen, believe me, a co-educational model of school brings in a lot of um, color to the school, not only in terms of uh, uh, programs, uh, cultural programs, uh, but also I will be cheeky in saying that boys have started behaving themselves. <laughs>
give them a Met Gala event where they live, relive the life of a border right from morning PT till lights off and living in the lodges. <laughs> And as a principal, I can promise this will happen and this will happen this year. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, yes. So we will we will like kind of yeah. give it a yeah. certain shape, expose them to expose them to some more hockey and cricket and football and some swimming and uh, same uh, breakfast in the mess. Maybe. Also bathing the way we used to. <laughs> <laughs> still sir, still girls lodges and boys lodges are very far away. Okay, so we leave, uh, we leave on a happy note here and uh, I would need your support as old boys. I'm not sure whether there is any old girl here. But, uh, oh yes we have good. So the young old girls, you're not even old enough to be called as old girls but yes, old RKCs, I would need your support to take our school further on a positive, greater path ahead. Thank you. Uh, this, uh, two, just two minutes, please. You will a good class. You yeah. get extra pudding also, please. Give <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's still something to be given a little memento or token of appreciation to both the speakers and both the principals yeah. and can we just hurry? Why don't you guys go and just give it the end to Fazana also? Okay, I'm just hurrying up. Come on. Quick, quick, quick. Come on.
I must say I didn't expect or ever want was any money for me. Worked money as such ever. It has not been my want. I am happy the way it is. But thank you. You all mean well. And uh, therefore I won't create a, a problem. And thank you all the donors or whatever. Uh, I wonder, I may take your leave and wonder what you have done. Do you want to compensate here? <laughs> <laughs> All the best. Thank you so much. I'm very welcome.